Hey, you guys. So I'm going to do an awesome episode today. We're doing a live podcast all about vulnerability and sex. And I'm about to bring on Maddie Yates. And we're going to be going over two different sides of the story and how to communicate more effectively and how to bring up, you know, some of those issues and vulnerable side and how to communicate. So here we go. Bring you on. Can you request? Because it's not letting me. There we go. Should we? We might need to shut this down so it doesn't echo. Hey, hey. All right. Can we hold the sound okay? This is like, yeah. Why is the color so weird? I don't know. (laughs) How about that? Is that better? There we go. It's a little bit better. Okay, cool. Hey, everyone. So let us know if you guys have any questions. We're excited to do this, and we're testing out issues. Hopefully, the sound's not Yes, so weird. For some reason, on our computer earlier when we were connected, it was not this bad. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Well, so whatever. We're going to be talking about <laughs> vulnerability. So drop your questions. Even if you're catching the replay, hashtag replay below. Uh, We'll come back and answer any questions about sex and vulnerability. If you guys catch it later, we'll come and answer your questions. And this is Maddie Yates. So go ahead and introduce (laughs) yourself. Yeah. So thank you. And I apologize about all these technical difficulties we're having here. So my name is Matt Yates. So I, uh, I've known Tia for, for quite a while now, actually. Um, we met just mutually through the coaching space um, and have become good friends ever since. So I, uh, I actually work more in the – so I, I guess you could consider me a life-slash-business coach is kind of where the two meet. So I do um, – my background prior to coaching was uh, actually in uh, business management consulting, which is, like, really exciting. Uh, so I have a corporate side of things, all of that, all of the business strategy, that kind of stuff. And what I realized, though – in working uh, in that environment for the big firm I did for four years was that mindset was truly the obstacle that so many yes. people face in business. And this, this is why I say business slash, slash life coach, because it really does blend um, and, and bleeds into each of those areas. So a lot of my clients that I work with, it is mindset with business, but helping them overcome those limiting beliefs, those obstacles, recognize the narratives, right, that we tell ourselves constantly uh, that create our lives. Like my basic fundamental principle for my coaching is your thoughts create your reality, which is a a huge truth. So I say all that to say, (laughs) that's a little bit of my background, but again, like the business side, but I also do a lot of the the life coaching. And I know that we, Tia and I have had a lot of really, really fantastic conversations. (laughs) And uh, the other the other great thing is uh, being a a uh, I was born and raised in West Virginia, which everybody yes. knows is I uh, it is it is the place um, and the stereotypes of West Virginia do uh, tend to lead themselves to be true. Um, it's very conservative. It's kind of a bumfuck nowhere. Um, but the beautiful thing is, is I, I actually was in the closet for 24 years until I moved from West Virginia. So it's interesting because the dynamic that I'm able to bring to the table, especially in conversations about sex, right, and about these kind of things, I, 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 I find that I, I have a really good ability to, because of my background, really understand, obviously, guys and men and that, that like, I don't want to label it toxic masculinity, but that, that, that fear uh, of, of vulnerability in some ways um, and, and, and all of that perspective. But I also can empathize big time with the other side and, and I have spoken to a, a lot of different women to listen to their side, how they feel. And I can empathize with that as well. So I, I like to act as kind of a middleman. So I think that's what... Yeah. And that's why we're both talking is so I can talk about the female side. You can talk about the male side, but also, you know, his different experiences. And that's why it's so great that way you you don't always see one side of the coin. You see both sides. Um, Mm -hmm. I had a big epiphany today with one of my friends and his side was completely different than mine. 
So it's always good to compare and to not always think that you're always right. And that's yeah. I think a really big part of the vulnerability is mm-hmm. sharing your your vulnerable side and then opening them to do the same and not saying they're wrong. Well, that is vulnerability, right? Like yeah. and at, it, at its very core, for sure. And I love that you said that because the the essence in my mind of vulnerability is the the fear of being judged or rejected due to an idea or sh- like sharing an idea, sharing the way you feel, you know, any of that stuff. Like have it when you when you are, have that fear of being rejected or turned down or laughed at or whatever it is, that inherently then squashes your desire or ability to be vulnerable. Yeah. So being said that they're wrong. So we mm-hmm. have a bunch of questions that I kind of found and that I talked to other people, but I'd like to start off with vulnerability. So some of the things, why is it so important to be vulnerable in sex and in relationships? And well, let's just start with that question. Are you, are you tossing that one to me? Yeah. So I think from a guy's perspective, right, there is this, uh, and it's, it, at being 2019, it, it is definitely getting better and better. Guys are, are, are becoming more and more in touch with their feminine and with uh, just different values and understanding there's just a lot more out there. But the toxic masculinity thing, and I know that's kind of a buzzword and it can be harsh, um, but know that, I, that I, I'm just using it to, as an umbrella term, but toxic masculinity is a very, very, very real thing. Being from West Virginia, again, growing up in that environment, I know firsthand. Um, and part of that just masculinity, fit, like idea that society has pounded into our heads is, you know, boys don't cry, right? Why? Because crying be, is being vulnerable and it's showing fear, you know, shame, grief, uncertainty, of being afraid, all of these things that we inherently or attach this negative label to they're bad right like we have good emotions and 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 things we have bad emotions and things that we label all of those things are 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 bad and it shows again the biggest one that sticks out to me is weakness and we as men feel like you know for our girls we've got to be there and you know we can't we can't be weak we've got to you know and we don't realize that true power as a man is being able to be vulnerable and to allow yourself to connect and let others in. So I'd say we put on kind of like an armor, you know, uh, with, with that, with that, because of this concept of masculinity and what we don't recognize. And we were speaking about this a little bit earlier is yes, it is true that vulnerability is the center, right. Of a lot of those things that I just mentioned, you know, being fear, shame, get all of that stuff, but vulnerability is also the crucial centerpiece of, of, of love, right? Of like, mm-hmm. it's the birthplace of, of all of those really positive emotions too. Uh, connection, love, innovation, creativity, all of these things that are crucial for a relationship and for sex and for, you know, connection. Yeah, and one thing that maybe women have difficulty on vulnerability is they don't want to show that they like them too much. They don't want to mm. show that they like them and then they disappear because that's kind of been this like, game in society is there i watched a video the other day i was looking up how to communicate to alpha males and literally an alpha male right there is toxic masculinity it was an alpha male was telling them to never show emotion never let her know how you feel never 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 put your guard down because then you have then she knows you have her or whatever the way and then they won't be there anymore it's that where did you see that Oh my gosh, it was super late at night and it was, I could, it was alpha communication, alpha male. Was it like on a YouTube YouTube. video? Okay. I could share the video. It was terrible. How many views? Never, ever share emotion. Never let her know how much you care because then you're done. Uh. You're done. And she runs away. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what they're teaching. I was like, no wonder men don't communicate. No wonder men won't open up emotionally and like actually allow a genuine connection. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. Well, and there's also this stigma in society, right? Well, and it's interesting. I would love to see that video, just how many views that has, because with the, the social platforms nowadays, right? Like it's so easy to spread these messages that are 
just that they are toxic and, and, and like that, like inherently. And what you just said, even you referring to an alpha male, that is, inha- that is the epitome of toxic masculinity. There is no such thing yeah. as, as an alpha in, when it comes to especially relationships, like it is a mutual connection of, of the two. So I would be interested to see oh. how many people were able to, you know, view that, watch that and like ingest that crap. Uh, let's see. I think I have it up here. I'll let you know. But if you guys, while you're watching, I see there's a few people drop comments. I will try to answer if you have any, like how to get a guy to open up, whatever it is. I'd love to hear, but I have had a few DMs. So what's the best way for a woman to help a man feel safe to open up? What would you think? That's a good question. Um, hmm. So my response to that would be, again, you know, that's, that's, that's a unique question because everybody is so different, but speaking from a general place, you know, I'll be really honest with you. I don't think it's your job as a woman to have to help a, a man open up. And I think that this is something I think inherently the issue with that is you're trying to fix. And if, if the, the human that you are with is not at a place of doesn't have the ability or hasn't learned everybody's the ability, but hasn't gotten to a point in their life where they've learned to be vulnerable, open up. And it's not your responsibility to get them to that place. Uh, supporting is, is, is great, but you know, I don't, I don't have an answer as to like, yeah. as a female, how do I help my man feel like you yeah. can't like that is that is that's inner work. That's mindset, inner work. That's disconnection with themselves. Uh, that that they inherently really have to work through because you can only lead a horse to water, right? So yeah. I know that that's not a, an amazing answer, but like that's that's genuinely like my response and how I feel. About yeah, it. I think okay. So I think that's really really good. It's you can't change the person if they're not going to open up. They're not going to open up. But then on the other side, I do think you kind of opening up first. And maybe sharing some of your vulnerable side Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe going like part of the way, opening up and then not pushing it. So don't push them to open up, but allow them to maybe share later, not at your time, but on their time. It's a great point. And then for your side is that they may never do that, but also know that you can't change them and to leave, to leave if you need that. But it's allowing them to choose and give them that safe space. You know, and something else that, that kind of comes to mind, I, I, I do agree with that a lot. And I think that an important key um, in that approach then is to also foster an environment of like safety and, 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 and like don't, no judgment, right? Because that's the other piece of it. Um, you know, when we fear vulna- vulnerability, it's, it's like fearing, you fear being judged. And as a man, it's like, if I sit here and I open up and I get emotional, if I cry, I'm going to be perceived as weak. Never, never. And, and, and this comes, you know, even if it's down the road, when you guys get in an argument, you look at, you know, you know you're, you're a fucking whatever because you cry. Like, don't ever, 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 ever do that. And this is the vice versa too. women to men and men to women. Never, ever use the, a person being vulnerable, that judgment against them, because it's, it's, you know, I think that that's what, ha- that's what happens a lot of times. It's uh, the fear of being judged. So if you open up, uh, make set expectations and, and set that it is a, it's a safe space truly between the two of you to express and say anything and everything. And don't tell them that they're wrong. Did we already cover that? I feel like we might have already said that. Like, don't say that they're ever wrong in their yeah. thoughts. Which is part of judgment, space. yeah. Yeah. And then let's see, I have a bunch of questions. So let's dive on in. So what is one way that you can bring up? Let's see, I have a few. If you want to be, which one should I pick? How to get your partner to open up and try something new. What would you say for a woman Mm. versus men, what they should do? And I will, I also have tons of this yeah. stuff. Love for you, or I can start, whichever. 
Yeah, no, um, no, I'm happy to take a whack at it. So it's interesting because so my uh, my ex boyfriend was really kinky we dated for two years. And I remember being I was super vanilla before that really it was my first real like giant early like actual relationship. Okay. And I, I, uh, I was, you know, again, I just didn't have a lot of exposure to that. Uh, and I remember a lot of resistance and kind of like a, well, why? Because just because though it was different mm -hmm. and it's this, this, this resistance to something different than what we think is, it should happen, but realizing that it's, and when I, when I questioned myself and went, well, why is the kinky or like, why do I, why do I associate that with, with a feeling of resistance or unease? Well, the answer was because it's just something different, which is outside of the norm or comfort zone. So I, I then was like, well, let me just lean into it. And I loved it. Like, I think it's so much fun. And vanilla sex sucks. Like, <laughs> it does. It's like, like, like just that the normal. I'm just like, oh, God, like, I'm so sorry that you're just still having like really normal sex. It's like, spicing yeah. it up, being different, being king. It's so much fun. So I think just to answer the question, I think it, again, first, it goes back to the original question or, or the statement of creating a, I think everything is going to stem from this, creating a space and an expectation with your partner of, of, of safety and, and no judgment. And when you have that space created in your relationship, then that gives you the freedom to be able to bring it up and say, hey, like, look, I, this is, I think this could be fun or, or. A woman to a man, you know, this is me stereotyping a little bit, but I don't know many men that would say no to coming home and you had the little outfit on or you, you initiated it by not like talking about it, by, by just doing it, having a set of like, you know, just the, the, the stereotypical furry handcuffs and like doing, just getting fun with it, nothing crazy, but surprising them. And I think that that's really hot and sexual in and of itself for you know your partner to just catch you off guard and just spice it up by just doing it not even talking about it yeah but there's also some things that you don't want to just bring out of the bedroom let's and talk about that <laughs> the kinky side is sometimes it is okay you gotta bring up certain things you gotta ask for permission you have to make sure it's okay for them make sure it's a safe place for them to say no because it's their body so if they say no that's okay Absolutely. but i think the best way to bring up like or un, I, you know not the best but a good example to bring up some new things is say hey i would like to try this and then maybe state why when when i you your response i was like oh that's a different side is like it's new it's uncomfortable so maybe me telling them why i want to try it might be good mm -hmm. do you think for like maybe in your yeah. circumstance they would, Absolutely. they would have been like, I would like to try this because of this. I like it. And it's okay if you don't want to kind of right. being okay. Right. Whether well, and there's a, yeah, there's a happy medium. And, <laughs> and again, I know we're being vague. So, you know, the levels of what we're talking about might be different, but I'll, so I'll just be very open and honest. So like, m like my, my ex was very into like, I, I am hesitant to categorize it as like, but it falls within that BDSM realm, right? Like of like the submissive thing. Um, and so for me, at first it was very much like, oh, this is, you know, I, I just didn't know how to feel about it, but it was very much like, like into like leather, like the leather harness, like wearing that, there was something about that. Uh, definitely like, you know, being like, like the handcuffs and stuff like that. But there was a, a line, like, because in that realm, then there gets to this point of where, like, some people are into, like, pain, and that would, absolutely not. And the way that we, we talked about it, we just, we had the conversation, yes. and conversation. he didn't want, he didn't want that either. So it was yeah. really great when we connected about, but, uh, but for me, it was like, okay, I'm, I, I am willing to explore this, but please understand that I love you, and I, and I will never be able to take this to a level of, of inflicting any sort of pain on you because I like, I, I, I fucking love you. Like I, I could never do that to somebody I love. And his response was, we were, yeah, we were on the, belief. exactly. So I can use, that is a, co oh, a okay. Exactly. And communicating. Anyone that. else wrong? No. That no, not at all. But, but that, yeah, no, I'm glad you said that. But that was my, sorry, that was my communication though to him was mm -hmm. I, that, that's how I felt. Now, 
Yeah. Absolutely. Some people just have completely different views and it gets them. And that's yeah. awesome too. But it's, again, it's just back to the theme of talking about it and being comfortable bringing it up and not having a fear of like them judging you for yeah. it. And don't, and not getting mad. What the yeah. response is. What about you? And what's your, what's your answer to that question? So I would like throw it out there in like, Hey, I'd like to try this. This is something that I enjoy. It's up to you. But I like to keep things like, I like to mix it up. It keeps it fun. Um, I've actually had in the past a guy get really insecure about me. And uh, what I realized was that he was uh, insecure in that I had more experience in new things. And that the, the guy needs to, like, pretend that the woman has never been with anybody else and that, you know, in their mm. brain, you don't want to know that you've tried up other experiences and things. And I was just like, he was so insane. That's powerful. That's a powerful. Yeah. Let's, I, I actually would love to, like, dabble with that a little yeah. bit because you just brought that to the surface. And that is, that is a, that is a huge, huge piece of, of, I feel like a lot of, just shit that surfaces and yeah because there there is this this dichotomy where it's like and back to this like norms and expectations you know that that are kind of placed on you when you're growing up and and you until you realize it's a story that you get to break through you know but as a man it's like it there it is like the the conver- I think back to like high school and, and college, it was all the conversation always about like, yeah, how many girls did you hook up with this week? Oh, dude, I like, I, I banged that chick. I banged that chick. I banged. It, like that was it, like, it was a trophy. But yet when yeah. girls, when girls nothing. experience, you're right, you're have sex, you don't talk about it. You're shamed for it. If you're sleeping or if you slept with a guy too soon, you're ashamed if you've been with multiple guys, you're ashamed. Like literally we grew up in a society where we're not supposed to be sexual, but men are and they're applauded. But then women are supposed to be perfect and pristine and not like different things. And this is literally what the society is like. We're trying to break these molds because Mm. they're just BS. Why is it okay that men can have, um, pleasure and they're supposed to but women are not supposed to feel pleasure and we literally don't have to feel pleasure to have babies but men do so like it's this this thing that's really fucked with our brains because yeah. we're not on both sides yeah shame for masturbation shame for getting to know our body shame for all this stuff that i'm so sh- fired up about and then you know it's this duplicity side it's so taboo that's what it's become to, taboo mm-hmm, we're trying to break these norms like it's okay for men to be emotion have emotion and sex and vulnerable side and then for me like it's okay to also want pleasure and to speak up and yeah and just as much as it's okay for 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 women to want to have sex it's also equally okay for men to not sleep around Right, because then yes. there's also this reverse thing where guys feel that like that they've got to be out there, do, and then they shame themselves internally if they haven't hooked up with more than two or three girls, or even that many. If you're still a virgin, who like who cares? It's it is this false again, this false story that we spin, and, and it, a lot of it's internal. Like yes, it comes externally, like you're a slut, so you know you're a whole, like all of this, but then we repeat you know you as a woman you repeat that in your head over and over and over again and then you feel shame for it and it just creates this shame around something something that is so beautiful and is so like it should be so accessible like sex is at its like we as humans at our very core like we're designed sex right like yes, and we should be able to access animals. that and experience it whenever we want to like we have permission to do that Yes, and we're animals. We actually, like, it's instinctual to want pleasure. It's instinctual for men to, like, plant their seed. And it's, yeah. And so I want to literally change this. And that's why I'm doing these podcasts and breaking these norms is to break down these barriers so that we can both, you know, male and female, rise up and love each other deeper and connect deeper and not put each other in these boxes that society 
over th hundreds of years have put us in that aren't actually true. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll like use you as an example. I still remember the car ride. We were in the car together when we had this conversation about uh, you, you were like, you know, should I post a video when you were for, like first posting? And I don't know if you had posted about like your pole dancing that you loved to do. Oh yeah. I've done pole Cause you, dancing, but not yeah, my booty yeah. Right. So you, but you had never, you had, you hadn't posted something along those lines and you were like, you know, is it too much? Should I, and I, and I, and we talked through it and, and, you know, ended obviously at this point of like, wait, why would I, why do I feel shameful for posting something that is, that is sexy and beautiful that makes me feel amazing. And I still remember watching when you did that alive, like a day later talking about it and you're like, I'm going to start doing this and I'm going to post this stuff. And I think it's amazing because it's like, that is something though, that is, that is not out there because it's perceived for women, you as a woman differently than if I did posted videos constantly of me flexing with my shirt off and stuff. What's the difference? Right. And it's because like, I would get, okay. A good example. I already deleted and blocked the comment. But a guy on here jumped on here and he said, love you, fuck you, like, I want to love you, fuck mm. you. And I was like, are you kidding me? That is why we try and hide. But honestly, once I started putting this barrier around me of, like, energetically, like, I show up the way I want. Nobody's going to, like, DM me their BS. I actually don't get any DMs of these crap people putting themselves on me anymore. It's like I put this barrier up of, like, I don't care. And now people don't do it anymore. But yeah, yeah it's like owning it and busting through these norms and it kind of gets easier and easier. But I was scared. I was so scared to shake my butt and be professional. And mm -hmm. literally once I did, everybody just, it's like empowering. It empowers other women too. Yeah, and it's nice to feel sexy. Like why is a taboo attached to the feeling of being, of being sexy? Like there is no better feeling than like when you, you know, have that dress on that just, and, you know, you're ready to go to dinner or out with friends and you just, you look at yourself and you're just in the mirror and you're like, I look like that feeling. I look awesome. Like, I look beautiful. I look sexy. I look, there is no, but you walk three inches taller when you feel that way. Right. Like that yeah. is an amazing feeling and it's called, it, it's confidence and confidence is, is, is fundamental to being successful in every area of your life. You've got to, you've got to feel like that in, in all areas of your life and you can't hide that. And what, what, whatever it is that makes you feel that and empowers you, you have to, you, and you get, well, not have to, you don't have to do anything, but you get to express that. Yeah. And it does. It literally is what we are as women is holding that power and holding that sexiness and not, letting people for me it's happened through my whole life is men like pushing themselves on me or like saying oh well you wear this skirt so you're asking for it but I hold that as in no this is me you're you and okay I turned you on that's not my problem that's yours that's mm -hmm. like I don't owe anybody anything correct so that's me so for women watching that's something I will be teaching on. I don't know how or when, but yeah, and that and that goes both that goes both directions too because I do feel yeah. like there is a this this narrative that that the guys are the rapists, right? And yeah. I can I, I I'll be honest, like I don't consider this like. I've actually never spoken about this, but like I I remember uh, it was when I was in like a freshman year of college maybe um, and I was at a a, a party and I like after the party was over, whatever, I fell asleep. It was at my friend's house and I felt I was sleeping on the couch in the living room. I remember waking up to a girl on top of me with her shirt off, like making out with me while I was what? passed out with her hand down my pants, right? Like straight up. And like, I mean, many could perceive that as like, whatever. I, I don't, it's like, it is what it is. But like, I... Oh. Right. So it, like the point of me saying it goes both ways though, it right? Like, because there is a narrative yes. that, that it's just guys that do those things yeah. and it's not. So as a woman, yeah. if you expect that from, or you want that from, from your man, you want your man to, 
to to be okay when it's like i'm not turned on i'm not i yeah. don't want to have sex right now or i'm not in the mood then also they'll give them permission and and be careful that you're not in certain circumstances kind of setting a double standard where you're pushing them to be turned on if if, if they're not in the mood either yeah and i think a good way to do like touch back and make sure your man is happy is to check with him so for uh my I did a podcast yesterday with Jody, and she said, check back, which this is very vulnerable. It's checking back on their wants, their desires, and their boundaries, I think it was, mm. and their fears. And, like, ask them, like, okay, how are you feeling? Is this good? Like, what's coming up for you? Like, to make sure to that you're not pushing any boundaries or that they're okay. Like, and also listen to them and hear them and not – not judge them or Absolutely. say that they're wrong. Okay. I think, you know, a central theme that of everything that we're, that, that we'll talk about and have talked about, it will boil down to communication. And it's again, fundamentally creating an environment between you and your partner of safety and no judgment and being able and willing and executing on talking to your partner, both guys and girls. And just like you said, to, you know, to make your man happy, it's just as much on men. Like if we want to make our women happy, right. We get to touch base with them constantly and ask them how they're feeling, what they want. Like, and as a guy, you know, talking about kinkiness earlier, it doesn't just have to be the girl initiating it. What if, what if you were to look at, at, you know, your girlfriend or your, your wife and say, Hey, what's, what, what is, what is, what is something kinky that, that you might be into? Like that, the turn, like what, what turns you on that you've never told me about just asking a really open-ended question like that and sparking the conversation just to, to, again, change it up, have a new, in that, it, that conversation in and of itself is really kind of hot and sexual, right? Just having that conversation with your partner, like, what turns you on? Like, let's t like talk to me. Like, it's so it's really about communication. Mm -hmm. And I want to cover that women listening. It's never up to your man to ask these questions. It's actually up to you to tell them. It's up to you to change what's going on in your life, in your sex life. It's up mm -hmm. to you to be like, hey, I want this. This feels good. This doesn't feel good. It yeah. is up to you. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, it's good to have communication, but if you're not liking something, voice it. And that's the learn. that's the communication, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Say what your needs are. Say what your wants are. Teach them. I will never had a man get mad at me for that. There's a way to do it. You know, maybe I learned something yesterday with Jody. Was ask them in a nice way, like, I would like if you, or I would feel good if you tried blank, blank, blank. See, that's so nice, mm -hmm. like kind. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's back to the environment of just, just trust and, and, and non-judgment and say, like, if you're with somebody, your, your partner, or even, you know, I guess too, there, there is the other side of things that I'm, I'm focusing a lot of, of my energy on talking about the, the partnership type thing or being in a relationship. But my, my biggest thing with the relation, if you are, if you look at somebody and they call them your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever, your husband, your wife, like you should 100% be able to talk to them. And if that, if that doesn't exist, and I'm saying about anything and everything, like there shouldn't be a question about voicing if something feels good or feels bad, or you standing in your power to go, I want to try this or like, just, just, it's an equal 50, 50 thing, like 100%. Yeah, it gets to be, really? it gets to be. Yeah, it gets to be. So I have some juicy questions. So one yeah. of them was, how to communicate with a partner if they aren't getting enough sex in a relationship, a marriage, yeah. whatever that is. Like how, what's an idea of how to bring this up? Especially with women, this could be really touchy. It makes them feel like, oh, like I'm just an object or blah, blah, blah. Like what would you say? So, you know, for me, I, you know, there... Hmm. This is a this is a touchy one, and 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 this is one of those things where I just again, you know, I think open and honest communication. But I think what this kind of boils down to, in a sense, is as a man feeling that 
we're not having enough sex or whatever, whatever. I think, I think that that is not the actual issue. And what becomes the issue is feeling like you're being rejected or your the you know your girl doesn't isn't really into you you know whatever story you spend there it's it's actually deeper mm -hmm. than that because it you know if if you we attach something more to to that like your girlfriend mm -hmm. or girl or whatever you know saying no to you is just saying i'm i'm not in the mood if we get offended by that or we have a negative reaction, that's on us. And that's triggering us because of an internal trigger that already exists yeah. because of some something that has happened or some past something, right? Like, it, like we are mirrors, so, yes. uh, right? We're <laughs> mirrors. So if, 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 if you are, you know, feeling like, oh, my, my girlfriend, she's just gonna have sex with me, like, and that frustrates you, ask yourself why? Why does that, like, does that make you feel insecure for some reason? Like, ask why and go deeper and find out what the actual core of those emotions are. And that is where the key will kind of be to working through all, like, all of that and those feelings. Yeah. Because you're, you're attaching, you're, you're blaming something that isn't the issue, and you're using that as the scapegoat for the issue. Yeah, and I agree with what someone said is to address the issue as I. Like, I feel like this, and I feel like maybe I'm not getting enough attention, or I'm not right. feeling loved, or feeling connected with you, and I would really like to connect with you. Like, doesn't that feel so much better than, we're not getting enough sex? Right, right, <laughs> but, exactly. yeah, Gia, it's so right, it runs deeper, and I actually, this just was like a big epiphany today about this it's like yeah they're having the rejection or the issues internally and there's something coming up that that's totally triggering them yeah and yeah and if, and if you feel like your partner if, if the sex really is low too and you th that again talk to them and go hey like yes this uh, you know I feel like we we aren't having sex as much and I just want to I just wanted to make sure that like you know how are you feeling? What's coming up for you? Yeah. Is, and, and if you need that reassurance, and then guess what? They make vibrators. We can master, like, that's what I'm saying. That, so, like, getting off is never, because that's what it boils down to. And I don't mean to be, you know, grotesque, but, like, getting off isn't ever the actual issue. It, it, it is, it's deeper than that. So have the conversation. Yes, approach. I wish I could see the comments. I can't see the comments. I can um, see them, but yeah. yeah, but, like, I, I do love, you know, saying hi, but just really feeling confident enough to, to speak to them, but also confident enough in your relationship to know that it isn't about you like it, it like really if, if your relationship is solid and truly just like in a good place it isn't it isn't about you and and men and women you know and and you could I, I know that there's been arguments with this and I you know I don't know but I know as a man I'm horny a lot <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, just a thing so you know and and I know right and I know that a lot of people will say yeah it's not a thing but to me I, I kind of feel like it is but again like that isn't on you the fact that I'm, I might be, I think it's a person thing, right? Like it just depends. There are, there are people that are naturally like, like me. And there are people that are naturally just not as, you know, just sexually, like just horny all the damn time. Right. And that's okay. And, and having, having that conversation with your partner and like accepting each other for that and knowing, again, it's not about you. And then finding a way to look, if, 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 if you're horny a lot, then Give yourself permission and give your partner permission to do their get own off. Thing. Right, exactly. Like, what's wrong with that? Why is there a taboo around that too? Yeah, exactly. So it's just, it's talking about it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, and also, uh, so I've, I've had a struggle in the past about like, okay, so this control issue, like I'm not in the mood, but they're always in the mood. So they think I'm controlling all of the time which I am a control freak. I'm learning that and I'm trying to, you know, get it on the DL. But <laughs> it's a lot of the times I'm actually not controlling it. I just, I'm not always in the mood on an instant. And so like this, it's only when I want it, I, I want it a way less percent of the time. So 
how do I, and, and they just feel rejected and feel like I'm controlling everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, and again, I, you know, hearing, I, like hearing what you just said, my, what, it, what comes up for me is again, this is not about you right? Like this feels like if, if they're feeling rejected, why are they feeling rejected? Why is the fact that you are not in the mood for sex, making them respond, <coughs> trigger them to go, you're controlling me, you are rejecting me. That is that's internal work that they have to to work like that isn't about you. And, and as difficult as it is, you know, some things again, just get to be things that the, the individual has to work through. And it's not your job, your responsibility as a female to fix anybody. Like you yeah. get to have somebody that is on the same level as you. And if that's not what is happening, if, if you're not horny and, and you get this constant, well, you're controlling me, that's not healthy. Yeah, it's not, it's not healthy. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, no, it's not. It's really, really. Not. And it's, it's just, and that is, uh, that makes you feel so that, that again, it's judged like this, not safe to express how you feel because when you feel not horny and you express that, then you get shit on for it basically. Like it just, yeah. it fosters all of these just negative, negative emotions and, and feelings. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. And I really like that you touched on that. Um, <laughs> So one thing, one good way, plus you guys have to check out my last podcast, which is coming out tomorrow. It's about sex as well, but it's a little bit more around Ooh. pleasure and communication. So Love this is it. a different subject. So go check it out. Sexy biz babe on all the things. Check and it out. I have a really juicy question that someone asked. One of okay. them was tips on having a threesome with a partner where you don't get jealous where you don't um you know you want to try something new but you're I afraid love this. and this is i can touch on this too but i i love us talking back and forth so okay <laughs> <laughs> so with the threesome thing um so there you know in I, w I do want to speak to kind of preface it with in the gay community. I feel like the, the three way, you know, drop thing is, 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 um, is prevalent, but I also think it's, it's, you know, three way relationships are becoming more and more prevalent in this, you know, straight arena as uh -huh. well. So it, it is becoming a thing. People are talking about it more. Um, but I just, for whatever reason, it gets tagged to, you know, gay society more, but I don't believe that. I believe it's, you know, across the board, the same, oh, it's definitely but across the board. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's so taboo. And, and here's, here is what I, I find when people are triggered by when you say threesome or you say a three-way relation, open relationship, any of that, and um, someone is triggered by that, again, that is a reflection of them not feeling comfortable with the topic. And so recognizing, and, and, and I say this because that was me. So when, when with my, with my ex-boyfriend, he many times brought up the idea of wanting to have a threesome and I always felt extreme resistance to it. And so okay. the type of person I am, I dug into that and I go, why, why am I feeling this? Well, it's a sense of control. It's a sense of ownership of like, this is mine and it's not wrong or right. It's just, this, these were my, these were my feelings. And again, with my, I do feel like my background kind of goes into that a little being re very conservative, West Virginia, my mom and dad have been married for 30 some years, you know, faith, like all of that. So that, that <laughs> is ingrained in me too. It, it's a part of it, but I just, I was very against it, but, but that feeling of resistance made me go, why? And I really started to just uncover all of these re that were insecurities within me that was that, that were leading me to, to feel uncomfortable with it. So I, I got to a point, it took me like a year, and I, but I finally got to a point where I was like, you know, it's a sexual experience, a threesome. I, I, my mind also jumps to uh, this idea of like, once it happens once it's you know it's always going to be a thing instead of recognizing it 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 can be a one-time sexual experience and the key was 
al allowing myself to go, look, this is outside of my comfort zone to an extent. But again, I live life once. Like, why, why not try and open myself up to this, this experience? Now, the key with, for me was boundaries. boundaries. The key, okay. we set very, very clear boundaries with each other of what would and would not happen uh, with, the, with the third person um, that, that we stuck to. But what's funny about it, do you have some? No, huge. boundaries. That's good oh, one. yeah, huge. <laughs> what's funny about it was when it actually went down and it happened, my ex was the one who within minutes, well, it was, it was a little longer, <laughs> 20, 20, 30 minutes, called an Uber and told the guy to leave, like was like, get out, oh! because he got so, he got so jealous of watching it. So it's an interesting because I, 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 I leaned in, I did kind of did the work and I, 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 <laughs> I allowed myself to have, and it, it's just funny how that reversed. So, yes. but boundaries, 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 boundaries. Yeah. And then don't ever be mad if they don't want to like, yeah, no. Care that maybe it's an open thing, but don't ever push some, push someone to do something they don't want to do from their heart. Absolutely. Because that's, that's going to shoot you in the foot. The food. The food. <laughs> the food. Shoot you, you don't in the food. want to be pressured into something that's going to hurt your relationship. So make sure it's mutual. Make sure you both feel safe. Make sure you both talk about your boundaries. Oh, what's absolutely. okay? What's not okay? Don't ever do it with someone that you would risk multiple relationships and you don't feel safe um, with if, thing, if it changes the dynamic. Mm. Because sex is connected. Sex is emotional. So I personally... I like to make sure it's not with somebody that maybe I'm a best friend with or that it could really damage our relationship and my husband, boyfriend, partner, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You really got to make sure you are stable ground and be secure about that. And don't blame the other person. Don't get into this mess for somebody else. And then when you're in it, you're like, I can't do this, which is okay if you change your mind, but try not to get mean yeah. defensive. Like, yeah. Not mean or defensive, but allow yourself to have the permission, though, to do what yeah. you just said. And that's what, like, again, back with with what my story, like, it, that's always a thing. Like, even we said, even when, you know, like, we met the, 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 the guy, met up with the guy, like, at any point, if you feel uncomfortable, you communicate that to me immediately and we walk away like at any point either of us kind of a thing so yeah. it is saying that it is okay. and you know it's interesting since we've been talking about this the viewers have like literally dropped like it's like a third of the viewers that were on here th because this makes so many people uncomfortable Trigger. it really it does. does it triggers it does. so many people yeah and it i challenge everybody to ask is... itself why okay this is a crazy thing that i just listened to i will share the the feminine sexuality link below for the podcast that I listened to today. It's talking about female sexuality and that what box we're stuffed into is not actually real. And the data actually goes against you guys. Beware the data goes against females in a monogamous relationship. The data, the data Meaning says what? that females actually struggle more than men in a monogamous mm -hmm. relationship data, like research, years and years of research that women get a little bored and they want to like get some more new things and like spice it up and change things up. Whereas males, not as much. And, and also females have more accessibility and blah, 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 blah. So this, this podcast that I'll share below talked about that. And it's like, getting out of these stereotypes and that, you know what, women, we are sexy and we do have desires and it is okay. Mm. And that they're not always as society says. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, I think, I think another key to, you know, the three way thing uh, in any, any shape it might take is ensuring that if, if you are bringing it up to and, and, and decide with your partner that that's something you want to explore, that it is it is because you guys are in such a good place in your relationship yeah. and not because the intention is for that to fix the relationship yes. because it will never fix the relationship. And that inherently, I assure you, is setting yourself up for disaster every single time. 
But when you're in a good place in a relationship that it's just, it, it, you're able to look at it as an experience, just a sexual experience and nothing more with your partner that you get to be, you know, it, it, it's exciting and it's just different and it's fun and it's something that happens you do one time and then just like anything else you might try, kinky, anything, you know? Yeah, so no, I think that is great. You don't want to do anything to fix something. Mm -hmm. It's maybe to bring some spice, some fun, some new adventures to bring you guys closer. But yeah, I completely agree. It's not yeah. to fix it. And I totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. I love um, hearing I love hearing your your opinions on it. This this is such an interesting back and forth. I love it. I know because we're very different. So I yeah. love hearing your side too, like the uncomfortable side, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, well, I'm crazy. <laughs> Which is a beautiful <laughs> thing. <laughs> so I think we actually covered most of them. I have. Oh, this is a thing. So I don't even know how to phrase this as a question, but I had multiple okay. women message me okay. and one of my friends and she was like how do you communicate to a man when he's used to just getting things easily getting women easily because he's mm. sexy he's he's always been really desired um and and then he's just used to getting it easy and he's frustrated that the woman that he's with and that he loves or whatever the hell it is is harder and that she doesn't want it instantly it's like this this stuck persona in his brain that oh well that's what I've gotten forever so why do you not want it like all the other women mm -hmm. huh so um to I, I to to make sure I understand kind of the the question so <laughs> the, the, the question is like so so a a your partner um is you know has just always kind of when it comes to like sex and and that kind of or we're talking about mostly sex, has always kind of gotten what they wanted or desired because they're, you know, an attractive person, great personality. They just, they just know and how to connect with people and have always been able to hook up when they want to, whatever. But when it comes to you, like back to what you were saying earlier about like you are, just aren't always like wanting to have sex. Like it's, it's just a normal, it's just you and how you're built, let's say. Yeah. But they do is, is, is that the question like, like they well, they feel was, rejected so again with sex or where are we i just my, want to clarify one of my friends is also kind of dealing with something similar is um they're just used to getting it what they want and when they want it so then when, so well, how is that manifesting though like can give me an example so i understand yeah with sex like they're just used to oh like a woman always want me so i'm just gonna get the easy women so like how do you communicate that hey like some women function differently, um, connect differently. They, it takes a little more effort, effort. That's what it is. Like effort, foreplay, build up versus okay. they're used to just getting oh, it like oh, that. Oh, okay. 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 Like, okay. I, I'm, foreplay. That's, that's that, that, there. That makes it. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, that, I think just kind of saying that and, and, um, also, like it, it's all about like walking the walk and not just talking the talk right like so if 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 you as a woman desire more foreplay and all have like it, it really it's it's setting that expectation with your guy but you know i think you can turn it into to again you can always turn things into like a fun sexy thing it's like look i want to, because sex is great but there's a lot of other great stuff you can do too. That's just as hot, if not hotter sometimes. Right. But it's all about the way you approach it. And in my opinion, and this is for me, but like, I don't have to actually have intercourse every time I have sex. Right. Like, because there's so many other things just and ways to, 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 to have sex. So I think not, I think, you know, speaking your truth about that is, is important, um, but also doing it too. And, and, and like, you know, in a sexy way being like, yeah. Hey, look, I want to have sex today, but like, let's like, I don't want to actually have intercourse. I like, let's, let's, let's 
almost play a game with this and, and, and yeah. see if, like how turned on we can get each other in just different ways and, and that kind of, you know, turning it, just spicing yeah. it up, turning it into a game a little bit, but, but showing by doing. Shoulders. Like, yeah. yeah, if she wants more foreplay, then do more foreplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if the guy doesn't, then he doesn't want to put the effort, but maybe the woman take the yeah. control. Well, because I know a lot of girls will be like, do I don't it. like going down on a guy. Well, okay, but you can't expect then a guy to do that to you if, if you're not willing, you know, and I, you know, it's just, it's something that right. if you want it, you got to, you know, put it out there and give it show by, show by yeah. doing, not by talking. Yeah. And also, yeah, but don't, don't phrase it ever like, oh, you do this and then I do that. But like, right, hey, like, right. This is what I would like, but also, yeah, show some love, do what you want in the yeah. relationship. I love that. Someone actually told me that early, like recently, they were like, yeah, if you want more foreplay, then do the foreplay. If you want more spark, create the spark. If you yeah, want yeah, yeah. more, I don't know, slow and sensual, you create the slow and sensual. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think that's what I was speaking to like yeah. a, a while back when I was saying about like, you know, get get the little like maids costume, you know, I, it, 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 whatever it, it is. And just like, do it right like just be be there when your guy gets you know if you if that's if that's what you want more of and you know there's something that just kind of randomly came to mind i know like you can get on amazon i'm sure and find like uh like the there's like dice right that are like sex dice and it has like different uh like when you roll them it'll give you different things to do like turn like order those and like i don't know a single guy or girl that wouldn't be like with their partner that's like wait this is fun like it might not be the yeah. second it comes in the mail but like save those and, and 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 have a night where it's like like let's just mix it up and let's let's do and that will inherently lead to more foreplay more just it's you know any way to just make it fun but also do and communicate at the same time yeah and i have one last question so one of the girls was like she lives in a small podunk town and it was the same question from earlier and she, <laughs> she is like i live in this small town and my my boyfriend keeps being like you like sex too much you talk about sex too much blah 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 and I, she's just like i i used to live in california like no and he's just like you just like sex too much like what would you what would you say with that i have no idea so without knowing the context, um, you know, my, I, I would, I'm wondering if, if it's referencing sex, um, it, it, like it's not referencing sex like with her exes and stuff, right? Like, cause, no, because I think, just, okay, okay. Just Cause funny. I know that that, that can be a thing. And that, that's something I recognize, uh, sometimes oh, yeah. with my friends. And I think that that can, that can almost be a little bit of spite in there sometimes is like referencing constantly like exes are like, you know, set, like oh, yeah. again, for, and that that's not that it shouldn't have happened and, and there's anything on having you know multiple partners or multiple you know people before but at the same time like I know at least for me personally I I don't like to think about my significant other like being with yeah. past people so but if she just re referencing sex in general you know that's interesting to me and again I I I I know that this has been my default but it, it really is true I feel like so much of it it, it comes back on him and and a lot of this stuff that we it just it really does it falls back on us as men and what we fundamentally the narrative we believe to be true and it, and if he is saying it in that way then there's a narrative in his head that women shouldn't talk about sex is an off limit or taboo or there's some stigma attached to this top because if she talked about shopping all the time he wouldn't have a problem let's say, yeah. you know, right? Like, so there's something about the topic in and of itself that makes him uncomfortable. Mm. And Maybe, yeah, it could have been even from his past relationships. It could have been hit from yes. his past, uh, I don't know, being grown up. Maybe yeah. his mom growing up was like, don't talk about sex. Don't talk about sex. Absolutely. Sex. So getting yeah, to the crux yeah. of it and that, so ask something the most big, powerful question. Yeah, the most powerful question you can ever ask somebody is just why, and and yeah. and asking from a place of love, like going, sweetheart, yeah. I'm just, I, I want to understand, like, what, like, so, like, why, like, why, why, why do you feel that way? Because I, I would love to just understand. And again, that's back to vulnerab vulnerability. Yeah. That's like to be the, in order to be empathetic to really understand your partner, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be vulnerable there is no it's not possible to not 
you 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 must be vulnerable to put yourself in a state of being able to truly be and visualize in your partner's shoes like what they're feeling and and why vulnerability is a key there without vulnerability that can't exist so that that really does come full circle with you know his ability to to be vulnerable or even her ability to be vulnerable like yeah, and be ask those questions ask yeah yeah, oh, yeah yeah i love that that was a perfect answer yeah so absolutely tag her in my group that way you guys don't know yeah what talking about but she yeah it's just asking why so i asked why one of my questions uh today and i will actually just let him speak of an issue and i was like oh i wasn't listening i wasn't uh, listening to what his issues were that are point. programmed in his brain and i i'm not right all the time <laughs> well there's no see and that's the thing too is there's no right or wrong right like yeah the, the at its core something i i preach is i know that this is kind of a random and harsh example but like for instance let's say there's a guy driving down the road right and he crashes his car gets into a really bad wreck and he he dies that elicits all of these emotions from us, like sad, like anger, like why, like why does that have to happen, you know? But these are all to the, to the universe, what that event was, was nothing more than energy changing from one form then into another form, right? There's no, it's neutral. There's no right or wrong. There's no positive or negative. Now that's not saying that feeling the way we feel, like there's nothing, that's okay. Like that's, and that's, that's just human. We have emotions, but understanding that inherently everything we've been talking about today, like these are just our opinions. These, this is just what like off the cuff, you know, we didn't know these questions coming into this, like this, there is no understand when it comes to sex and anything and everything in life, there is no right or wrong way there's a line obviously yes. but 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 really like expressing yourself communicating yourself there's nothing you say to your partner when you're trying to open up about doing new things or sharing new ideas from a place of love D don't don't go i wonder if it, is it is it okay for me to do? yes there's not a right or wrong with that like you it it everything is neutral and you get to express yourself and you get to stand in your power to embody authentically who you are and what you feel, how you feel, and you get to express that and live that. Yeah, yeah. and I love this. Oh my gosh, this, I think that was a great way to end it. Um, we've hit about an hour mark, I think. Yeah, and are you guys, serious? Oh my yeah, gosh. Share this, you guys. If you feel yeah. like sharing this, I'm going to also share it on my business page as well. But feel yeah. free to share. Tag your friends if they need to hear this. Like, bust through these societal norms. Absolutely. Share some of this information, even if it's a little uncomfortable. Maybe you just share it on a message. That's all the more. That's all the more reason to share it because if if this feels like this is the conversation though that gets to happen, and we a lot of the 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 stuff that happens, you know, in in the sexual realm, that you know, it's just there's such a taboo attached to it, and if we. Yeah. Just and this is with a lot of things in society, these mm -hmm. things that we mark as taboo. If we just recognize that again, everything is neutral, sex is sex, and we became comfortable, all of us, with just talking about it, removing that stigma, and mm -hmm. starting the conversation, which is what we're trying to do here and why it's so important. And I ask everybody to really share this um, and yeah. to comment. I would love to hear your thoughts, I want to hear your opinions and your questions, but like we when we can remove the veil of the stigma of this then we feel comfortable talking about this stuff and it just becomes the norm and it's yeah. okay you know the stigma is what really makes this tough because people just don't want to bring it up and talk it's it, money is the same like you don't talk about money like how much do you you know there's all of these things we play stigmas on but when we remove those we realize it's just human like yeah. sex is just it's human. There's human. a spectrum. Yeah. There's a spectrum of people who want to have sex all the time to like people who are asexual. Like it just, everybody's unique and embracing and loving your partner for who they are, but also owing it to like communicating to your partner as well, who you are and how you feel and, and, and what you want and desire and just, yeah. Connecting, yeah. connecting, connect and connection requires vulnerability. Awesome. Awesome. I love this. And you guys, if you want to talk about sex more, I have in my group, we talk about all the things, BDSM, what's crazy, what you've tried, yeah. whatever it is. 
we're very open and it, there's things yeah. I share in my group that's private that I don't share on my public display. So join, join, join her group. Absolutely. Yeah, Soulful and, get... and Sexy Biz Babes. It's super awesome. And where can they find you? You can find me on Facebook. You can find Instagram uh, is literally at Matt Yates, Y-A-T-E-S, uh, my name. This is the best place to, to connect with me. Uh, also, I have my website, www.mattyates.org, not, not .com, .org, uh, but Instagram is definitely the, the best place. And I, I would love for anybody and everybody to, again, I love to connect with people and I love to hear thoughts and opinions. And like, that's, this is what I do and what I love. So reach out, send me a message and let me know like what you think and just your ideas. Yeah. If you agree, if you disagree, like, I love to hear that. And I love to have this conversation. Yeah. So never hesitate to reach out. Yes. Same here. I love it. Love it. Love yeah. it. Hear what you think. Share it and tag your friends. And Tia, I want to acknowledge you for being like, cause I think it's amazing that how, how brave and, and just open you are like with, with talking about this, with opening up, with sharing what you do. Uh, you know, you're part of the movement to, to create a society where females do feel empowered to, to be sexy and to, to, to acknowledge that they're sexual beings just as much as men and that's okay. Yeah, and it's, it's almost something that just has been coming up slowly and now it's just like, I'm on fire. I like yeah. can't stop. I just realized this is like the third podcast I've done around sex. And even just three months ago, I was so scared. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do mm. it. I was like, no. And now I'm just like on fire and I just really want to help women enjoy mm. their life more, connect to men better, help men connect to women. Like, ugh, there's this divide and... I don't know. I'm so passionate about it. So I love it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> your pl your passion bleeds through all you do. So thank you so much for inviting me to do this. This was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Matt. And I hope you have Absolutely. a great day. All right. Bye, Bye everyone. Until next time. Okay. Bye-bye.